So Acts chapter 11, somebody other than me can read tonight. I'll read. Okay. You can read. I can't do math, though. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 11, all of 11? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's short. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again in heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were set, in which we were sent to me from Caesarea, 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 and the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, "Send to Joppa and bring Simon." who is called Peter. He will, to, he will declare, you, declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they, heard the, when they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Mm -hmm. Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, also preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. (coughs) So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Now in these days prophets came down for, from Jer- Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Okay. Hmm. Mostly narrative in the in the chapter this week. <coughs> Peter gives a you know, kind of a report, you know, a rehash of what we went over last week when we looked at 10, looked at Peter's vision. Um, too bad Richie's not here. Got another circumcision day. That word's everywhere. I'll set him the recording. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts?
this saw in the last verse 30. Mm -hmm. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Mm -hmm. Is that the Paul Saul or is that another Saul? No, that's that's the Paul Saul. Yep. Okay. There he sounds like a good Saul, not a bad Saul. Um, this is the post conversion. I'm sorry? This is post his conversion. Okay. So. But I never heard anything, never written. Who am I? Um, I just hear, you know, I just, you know, hear a Saul being persecuted in the, the church. Mm -hmm. Not in any way that they, they send in their gifts to the elders. I mean, he's, he's a good guy. He's. No, and, sir, and, and that's okay. I'm just saying, but it was just, it just dawned on me that. No, same Saul. There's no event where all of a sudden they just start calling him Paul. Is and it will happen in a chapter or two, I believe. Is they'll gradually start saying, and Saul, who is also called Paul, and then they'll just start calling Paul. Oh, okay. So there's no event that says, and then on this day forward, you shall be no longer known as Saul, you shall be known as Paul. It doesn't happen. Oh. It just goes, oh, they, yeah, we start calling Paul because uh, reasons. So the road to Damascus was a while back. That's when I thought it. That what? Yep. Uh, that's when I thought it. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so the circumcision party, um, those are Jewish converts to Christianity that are teaching. Uh, not only do you have to have saving faith, but you also have to observe all of the ceremonial law of which that is included. So you have to watch what you eat, you have to watch what you wear, you have to watch who you associate with, you have to be circumcised, blah, 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 blah. Uh, <clears throat> and of course they're after him it's like oh you were eating with unclean people right because he went to Gentile house uh, he was staying with a tanner before he had the vision and then went to uh, was that Joppa where was that town Joppa was it Joppa okay. yeah. so before he went to Joppa uh, he had his uh, vision while he was staying at the house of a tanner which staying with the tanner would have made him virtually unclean because a tanner handles animal skins. So that person would have been unclean. So Paul, or Peter, a Jew, could not, should not have been doing that, strictly speaking. So Peter was picking and choosing a little bit. So even though tanning was for his profession, mm -hmm. didn't necessarily mean he was eating or consuming, but it still made him unclean. Yeah, it made him virtually unclean. But being, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could be an undertaker too, but you still had to go through all the ritual uh, cleaning before you could go to the temple or do any of that stuff. Okay, so you have these circumcision party like we talked about. I think we talked about, or maybe we talked about Sunday. I don't remember. No, we talked about it last week. Was it last week? We talked about how you have these people who, you know, for thousands of years, they've been raised as Jews with these traditions and observances. Now, all of a sudden, you know, they're going to be told, you don't have to do all that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something you can do overnight. Right. So we're seeing the beginnings of that here with Peter. Obviously, he has relaxed his restrictions on himself by staying with the tanner. Then he has this vision, and he goes and eats with Gentiles and preaches uh, the gospel to them. Uh, and now he's back and he's reporting about it because these guys are going, hey, you did this. And Peter says, oh, no, 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 this is what happened. And, you know, here's the deal. And the Holy Spirit told me to do it, and I did it, and the Holy Spirit fell on them just like it did to us. So who am I to say this isn't how it's supposed to be? And, so, and basically that's that whole first part of the chapter is basically doing that. Recounting so, that what happened. So that great sheet mm -hmm. was the Holy Spirit. No, that was the vision he had. So vision. he had a vision in the, the the Holy Spirit sent him a vision. In the vision, this thing that looked like a sheet came down, and it was full of food. It was full of all kinds of animals. Oh. That was back in chapter ten. Chapter oh. ten. Yeah. Uh, oh. And then the the Spirit told him, you know, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And he said, Lord, I've never eaten because there's unclean animals on there. 
there were things he couldn't eat uh, as a Jew. And God says, you know, no longer call unclean what I've declared to be clean. So not only is it you can eat all that stuff now, you also can go to the Gentiles and, like I told you to, make disciples. All right, so all that stuff, all that ceremonial law is now out the window. Okay. And there was a <clears throat> there was a blog post from the Godestines crowd. They're the high churchy Lutherans, and it was talking about. I haven't watched the video yet, but it was talking about Judaizing Christianity today, which is still happening. You know, you'll see these websites where they insist on calling Jesus Yeshua because mm-hmm. it's more authentic. Well, yeah, that's his name. In Aramaic, his name is Yeshua, Joshua. You know, but you have to call him that. Okay, whatever. And then, you know, you can always tell if someone's slightly Judaizing Christianity, they insist on calling God Yahweh, which that's his name in the Old Testament, but that's just, I don't know. First off, you don't know that's how it's said. We don't know how it was said. So we Was don't that know such that. A bad thing? No, that's oh. why God told us what his name was. That's why his name is I am. Mm-hmm. The being one. Strictly speaking, it's I am the being one, the isn't one. Uh, so but but yeah, so they think uh, oh and the, they want to reenact Passover Satyrs at Passover. Like Monday, Thursday, they want to have Passover Seder. They want to I think somehow they're being more authentic if they add all this Jewish stuff to Christianity. Which, eh, no, it's not really helpful. It's not commanded. But they like dredging up that ceremonial law because it's stuff we can do, right? Yeah, and that can get carried away with that too. Yeah. So there's a, he did a video, and it's like 45 minutes, I haven't watched it yet, but it's about what's going on today with trying to Judaize. Uh, Christianity and attach things to it, which that's what Jesus yelled at the Jews from in his day was them attaching stuff to God's word. Uh, so I'll watch that, and maybe and maybe we can watch it here. I don't know. Uh, see if it's worth our time to do that. Uh, we haven't watched anything in a while. No, so maybe we'll do that because that that would be interesting to see how that stuff applies today to what mm-hmm. people are doing in the church. Yeah. Because they are, and it's not like I said, it's not really helpful. Uh, I'd rather people would like read their Bible and realize what goes on in the sanctuaries modeled on the temple and on the tabernacle. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, there's reasons why everything is the way it is. Uh, so if you want to bring in Jewish ceremonial law, go to church, because it already does that. I don't think most churches teach that. No, they don't. Or they mentioned it in confirmation or Sunday it. school a minute, and then that was it. Uh, but that's that's the gist of that whole first section. There's really not a lot to it. Again, Book of Acts, lot of narrative, um, not a whole lot of doctrine per se, uh, until we get to places where they actually do that. Uh, but everybody hears this. We have that important phrase again. When they heard these things, they fell silent and they glorified God, saying, "Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life." So. Peter's reported back. Peter was sent on a mission to the Gentiles. He's reporting back what he saw, and what he saw is, hey, there are people. There are people too. So, and and everybody is again like they in those earlier chapters said they were all of one accord, and they all did this stuff together. And again here, oh, they worship God and said, oh, the Gentiles also God has granted repentance. Repentance that leads to life is a neat phrase. So repentance, oh, what's the word in Hebrew? I don't remember. Let me Google. It's it's like it's like shech or something like that. That kind of what went through my mind then is this uh, at the end of verse eighteen. So then God has granted even to the Gentiles repentance unto life, and with the sheep, and that you know you would that. I'm thinking of curtain, you know, curtain of the temple. That that, mm-hmm. that that's what comes to my mind as I read that passage. Yeah, the the imagery of veils being removed mm-hmm. is, I think, key. Shuva? That's not the right word. Uh, no, the Hebrew word for turn. That's what you need to look up. Turn. Turn. 
T U R N. Yeah, Hebrew word for tart. Uh, yeah, because that's modern Hebrew. Uh, okay, I see in uh, verse 25, when Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. Shub- what he found? What did I say? Did I say Shef? Or something you like that? Shub- that was close. I know it was a shush. That's like half the time, if you do the shub, you're going to be in the ballpark. And they'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, so shub. Or shub. S-H-U-B. Yeah, so that's the Hebrew word for turn, which is all over the Old Testament, but at about a tenth of the places, it's translated correctly as repent, not turn. Uh, so repentance that leads to life, that, that Jewish idea... Because then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Uh, these are Jewish converts saying that, so that's why I'm bringing up the Hebrew word. Uh, turning, this idea of turning. Uh, repentance is something God does to you. Which is, say it again? Uh, yeah, that's why we're talking about this. So repentance is actually something God does to you. What? God, oh. God yes it is. So God gives you the ability to Acknowledge your sin and turn back to him and turn away from whatever sinful behavior you're doing. So it's actually it's something that's driven from God's side to us. Why doesn't God do it to everybody? Good question. Or he does, but they use or, their free will to not use it. Right. So I think I think I actually talked about it here somewhere. Okay. turn around. Uh, repentance is God's work that leads a person to renounce sin, requesting God's mercy and returning to his way. Jeremiah 30, 19. Okay. What did I say? Jeremiah 30, 30 19. That's all right. Yeah, so you have disciplined me and I was disciplined. Uh, Bring me back that I may be restored. Uh, That is a turning back of the Lord in repentance. Restoration or repentance, whether physical or spiritual, is only possible if the Lord brings it about. <clears throat> that also means you can ask Him to bring it about. But... Yeah, so repentance isn't just asking for forgiveness, it's asking to be changed, right? That's the part we miss. So it's not just, I did something wrong, I want to be forgiven. It's, I don't want to do this anymore. So, And that's what the idea of this turning is, okay. is turning, turning toward God's way. <coughs> and we can't do that on our own. Okay. So that's, but we often think of repentance as just being, I, I'm sorry, I got caught most of the time, but I, I'm sorry I sinned. And it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I want this to be repaired. I want this to be restored. I want to turn away from my old behavior. And you know, a good way to think about that is always go back to Psalm 51, that, you know, the classic story of David and, mm-hmm. and Bathsheba and then Nathan coming to him and showing him he was a sinner. He would never have repented. God sent Nathan mm-hmm. as his spokesman to show him what he did. Okay. That he needed to turn from that way. Okay. So, I have a bowl, and in this bowl is my salvation. And what is in this bowl, I have not put there. God has filled this bowl with repentance mm-hmm. and belief in Christ, mm-hmm. and all that. So this, I, I okay. and he gave you the bowl. <laughs> 
he gives me the bowl, so I reach in and I get my repentance. And they reach in and I get I Believe everything. Yeah. And then I have my salvation. And the bowl's empty. I go to heaven. <laughs> no, but your cup runneth over. I'm sorry? But your cup runneth over. Not Absolutely. Water, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what that's talking yeah, about. Yeah, so okay. your cup runs, it's like, it's not like you just go to the grace bowl. And I'm, I'm using my grace, I'm using my grace. That's Roman Catholic. You know, that's like the whole treasury of merit, right? Okay. So the saints were so holy, and they had grace to spare. So we can, like, yeah. help a brother out <laughs> yeah. and give me some of your grace. I'm going to buy this indulgence yeah. and merit this grace from them to use for me because I'm so wretched. I mean, that that's all man-made, right? That's, that's where so that all ridiculous. came from. That's where it all came from. Wow. Uh, but the truth is that grace is... It's not going to run out. The only, the only time the grace runs out is when you flip the bowl over because you don't want it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's where your free will comes in. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, the bowl and everything in it, it's got nothing to do with you. That's purely God. Including this idea of wanting to change. Okay, but... Never mind. Okay. I said that I can't remember the Greek word for repentance. Ah, doesn't matter. I'll do something I'll do for next time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's a neat, a neat little phrase. Okay, so the way they said that. The repentance is in that bowl. And then we take out that repentance. And, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm truly sorry for my sin. Please help me change. I don't want to do it again. But then I go do it again. Mm-hmm. That way, we have to keep repenting. Because mm-hmm. we keep doing this. Because our human nature is antithetical to God's way. So, I mean, that's why the original Christians were in this, like, we'll get to that here. And this is where they were first called Christians. Because they called themselves followers of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, and the way was God's way. But when we. Our way is going the other way. Yeah, because when we ask for that repentance and ask to change. And we still keep doing it again and again. Well, you know, like your yeah. sexual sin, your gambling, your your addicts, your you know, even little things that w- people don't consider sin, like you know, laziness or you know, not doing, not being faithful, and you know, going to church. Little things like that. Like if we acknowledge it that it's wrong, but we keep doing it anyway. Are we truly repenting? Depends on the. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes we just fall back into that behavior. You know, because you, you're not going to pray, God, don't ever let me do this again. Why not? Because he's not going to do that. I mean, maybe, I'm not going to say he's not going to He can do, do anything. That. He can do anything, but the solution for all sin would be, God, make us so we can't sin anymore. Then but we wouldn't have free, Then you wouldn't yeah, have free will. I have to not want to sin. No. Right. I have to want it. To repent is okay, I'm I need to sorry I did or sorry I got caught doing it one or the other. <laughs> okay, well I'll throw this out there then. <laughs> what does God really want? For us to not sin, and this might be a little controversial, because of course God doesn't want us to sin. But does God want us to not sin or does God want us to come to him to deal with the problem of sin? He wants us to come to him. Yeah. Right. It's a relationship with him. Okay. Right. Since we're born with it. Okay, we come here with it. That's right. That's our natural nature. Sin's mm-hmm. not going away. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. exactly. It's exactly. Not exactly. Not it's not going to go away until Jesus comes, you know. Right. So, come it, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's that, you know. We yeah. can't be perfect. Ever. Right. Right. It's no, impossible. Right. Yeah. And to even try is a sin yeah. because it has vanity. <laughs> but you can't. So the more vanity. you try, the worse you get. You know? Wasn't it John Wesley who tried to be perfect? He was Probably. Trying, trying to reach One perfection. Of those. Yeah, well, yeah. Methodist, nonsense. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's... Well, well, I guess we can and your monks on the mountaintop try to do that, too. Okay, they're delusional. But, but you know, it's not so much... And I mean, is it... I have to be careful how I say it because it's, it's not so much that we sin, because sinning is obviously bad. It carries all sins carry the same death penalty. Right. But it's God's not necessarily hung up on the sin. He's hung up on the 
do you think you can do this on your own or don't you think you need me? He wants us to see we need him for everything. Right. Okay, but I truly believe that there are some people, you know, who have an issue. Okay, let's say, let's say heroin addict. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, hands and knees begging, calling out to Christ, please, please help me. Please, you know, let me rid this for my life. Let me follow you. Let me draw closer to you. Lord, please rid this for my life. But they can't because there's so much in their head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What about them? Because right. I think they are being repented and they do want to change and they do want to turn from their sin, but they can't. Right. I mean, some things, is it because of fallen human nature? You know, the fallen world mm -hmm. that they are broken in that way? Yeah. I think in some cases, yes. In other cases, we ask, are we asking the right question? If we don't like the you know, litmus test of prayer, if we don't like the answer we're getting, are we asking the right question? Probably not. So if it's, if it's just take this away and make it all go away, no. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe, you know, show me how to do the, to okay. rid myself of this. You know, maybe we don't ask the right questions. Uh, maybe we see the answers and we ignore them, don't recognize them. Don't or, like or them. Or don't like them. Don't like them. <laughs> you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, I, I want to do this, but I don't want to go to rehab. They don't want to put the foot in the work. Right. right. It's like, well, I just want to... Like, ma magic wand, take this from me. That means... Yeah, and, and, and then we color it with, yeah. I'm not strong enough to do this. God, I need you to do this for me. That's Satan. Mm, think yeah. you're not strong enough. So, but addiction is also physical too. Sure, it's a physical addiction. Yeah. So, are there you, you know, know are there where where it's completely out of the person's control? Yes. And is it still a result of sin? Yes. Because in a world where sin didn't exist, those things wouldn't exist. Yeah. Uh, but but you got to get rid of the physical sin. Before you can work on your internal, get rid of the physical. I'm sorry, get rid of the physical. The physical sin of the addiction. Okay. Before you can work on the spiritual. Mm. I think they're so intertwined because it's the. the I kind of think you can't get rid of the physical you, you can't without have, the spiritual. Yeah, right. you can't have one without the other. Yeah. It's like right. a chicken and egg thing. Yeah. Well, they do yeah. work with you. Spiritually, too. Sure. You know. So. And, my, and well, from, <clears throat> I actually have a grand, a stepson of mine, uh, to teach me, without <laughs> the props, teach me drug addiction. He was a man, you know, teach me what you go through, what's in your mind, what, you know, what, I know it makes you feel good, you know, and, and all that kind of good stuff. Teach me drug addiction. And he did. He said, generally, and, and you start it when you're in a downward spot, you know, emotionally you're, you know, you're, you're down, really, really down. And somebody offers it to you and it makes you feel good, you know. And he said, you spend the rest of your life, or as long as you're chasing that first high, you know. And he said, but if you ask anyone, it, they'll just, I'm going to try this, you know. We all have done that, but I, when you really become addicted, it's... You're, it's, 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 it's not the drug, it's beyond the drug, and I think that's what you're, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it's not just picking them and doing, I got it, I got to have it, right. no, you know, it goes much, much deeper than right. that, and you have to go that deep if you want to get And you'll do anything to get it back. Yeah, 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 exactly, and you have to go that deep to, to find out why it's there, you mm -hmm. know, and then be willing to... They work on that, too. Exactly, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and that, yeah. That, that's where the mm -hmm. tough part is, because we have to look inside ourselves and... If we don't like what we see, we just assume ignore it or just, uh, well, blame it on somebody else or right. something yeah. else or whatever. That's a whole lot easier than dealing with it. Yeah, that's a, exactly. The yeah. self-examination, if you really do it right, man, it'll ruin mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll get you. you know? And it, it's a good thing, you know, if you're doing it to get closer and to help your walk with God. It's a wonderful thing, but it can really be scary. Yeah, you find a you that you don't like. Yeah, let's say I have this thing that's called a it's called a Beichspiegel, uh, which is just German for confession mirror, mm -hmm. and it's it's a fairly modern one, so it's got all the fun stuff like the internet and things of that nature in it. But it takes you through the Ten Commandments basically as a prelude to the Lord's Supper. So it's like your before communion night 
confession. Uh, don't use it all the time because it's long. I mean, it takes you through all Ten Commandments mm -hmm. in detail. Mm -hmm. And so, did you think about this? Did you do that? And it's, that's always, there's no guidance. It's just, here's the mirror that the law doing its job showing you you're a sinner. And you go through the thing, and you have like, don't ever do the whole thing. <laughs> because you'll be miserable when you're done. You're just like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Which is the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, like Luther said, you know, you go through the Ten Commandments every day and think about them that way. But when you get hung up on something, then you just stop. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be praying about. And then you go out with your day. Not like, I, not like rattling through the rosaries, like I have to say them, I have to recite them in this order mm -hmm. three times a day because I have to. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you do it because you want to get your mind focused on what is it I need to take to God. Ever since you taught me that, yeah. I've shared that with other people when they say, when they come to me and say something like, I don't know what to pray about. Like, I know I should pray, but I don't know what to pray about. Ever since you taught me that, I've passed that on to other people. Like, when and when you stop, well, that's what you should pray about. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, do it with Ten Commandments, do it with the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. Even the Ten Commandments. You know, because it's not always, doesn't always have to be when you're going through the Ten Commandments thinking about bad stuff. You know, it could be about good stuff, too. Think about the ways God does bless you with our Lord's Prayer, daily bread, and what have you. I like the Lord's Prayer. I started saying that a lot when, when this COVID thing happened, and they said that was the perfect amount of time to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. was to say mm -hmm. A lot of people did. I, yeah. That's when I really started to say it all the time. Yeah. And, like, somebody walked in on me in the bathroom and just kind of chuckled. She's like, yeah, I do that. <laughs> well, my Certainly opinion. better than the singing the happy birthday song. A couple right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody standing at a sink, wringing their hands together, singing happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yes. That's yeah. crown, like, cl crown yeah. Cl yeah. creepy. Yeah, it's like <laughs> time to get the butter big butterfly nut. <laughs> my favorite. Well, one, one prayer that I'll never forget that I prayed, and it, it was I took God at his word. I didn't know what to pray. I knew what I was, what the problem was, but I didn't, you know, how to articulate it. And my prayer was, Holy Spirit, this one's on you. <laughs> you know, and I, I meant that. I yeah. just, I couldn't, I couldn't get, get the words together in my mind. And it, it was just such a awful feeling or place for me to be in spiritually. And I knew it. And I did, and I had pecked at the prayer, you know, Lord help me. But this day, I mean, it really got to the bottom. I mean, I told the Spirit, this one's on you. And I swear, if I had one more hair in my ear, I could have heard it. I actually felt as though, you it's know, so I could good. almost hear. I knew that he was at the throne. I knew that he was there. Took him at his word. And that's all I could pray. The Holy Spirit, this one's on you. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Scripture does tell us, you know, before you thought, the words are upon my lips, Lord, you know. Yeah. Right? That's Psalm 138, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before the prayer's on your lips, he knows what you're going to say. So it's like, if you don't know what to say, you already said it, so mm -hmm. stop worrying about it. He's got this. You mm -hmm. know, even though you can't articulate it. See, that's but like, but like I said, too. prayer right. is for us. God mm -hmm. doesn't need her prayers. He knows what we mm -hmm. need to ask. But the prayer is for us. Mm -hmm. For us to be you know, aware of him working in our lives, which doesn't necessarily do it in a voice in our ears necessarily, but he does do it through other people. Um, he does it through his word, uh, but we're not always cognizant of it. Uh, so the actual prayers, that's for us, which is why he gives us the word to pray, and that's why it was interesting that a Lutheran pastor on his radio show the other week said something like, you know, talking about made-up prayers, somebody wrote in to his show and said, well, what about, you know, I don't know, I, I'm not good at making up prayers, you guys, so stop doing that. Because when it's your words, a lot of times that's not good. Because God gives us all the words to pray. He wants us to pray his words back to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so we don't have to have these you know, fancy, Be that low. Yeah. You know, the long made up, yeah. the, like the prayer of the church, but that serves a purpose every Sunday. But Because we're all supposed to be praying the same words, mm -hmm. if we do it right. Uh, but not this long, drawn-out, dramatic, God's not grading you on the essay, okay? It's like, oh, I need to pray for something. 
I'm going to go to the Psalms because there's a Psalm about that, and I'm going to pray that Psalm because that's what He gave them to us for, mm-hmm. their prayers. I think that's where a lot of people get caught up. They want their prayer to be so perfect, mm-hmm. yeah. and they don't know what to say. And you just tell yeah. them, it, it, just start and talking. It doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> start so talking. I say, in your word, you said, don't ask me the page in the chapter, but I know it's in there somewhere. And I, I've had it, heard it, and, you know, so yeah, you have said. Yeah, yeah. so... That's it. So I don't know the address, but I know it's in there. <laughs> yeah, Luther, I mean, Luther would do that person. He'd have verse numbers. But he always, you know, Luther would say, as it's written, and he would get the chapter wrong, like, every time. So there's always, every time he cites scripture, there's a footnote, like, it's in brackets, because that's not what he wrote. And he had the editors that put, I filled this in because he had it wrong. All the time. Everybody does that. There's, like, there's, it's one of the tricks of, of like, speaking, this, or, right, preaching, even is, like, I use a full manuscript with all the footnotes on it, so I don't, because I'm me, and I've got an OCD it. But, you know, people are preaching, they'll just be like, you know, as it says in, in you know, Exodus chapter 30, and they just keep going, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's Exodus chapter 30. It's not Exodus chapter 30, so it's like Exodus chapter 10. But, right book, or, or it's not even in Exodus, it's in Deuteronomy. And, but that's not the point. The point is that it does say that. The word does say that. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get the citation right, but the, yeah, but the right, trick right. is it's, don't go. I think it's um, and just derail the momentum of everything. Is just misspeak and move on, yeah. like you did it on purpose. Yeah. It's what like you try to teach lectors. If you don't know how to say it, just say something and move on. <laughs> and pretend you do. Pretend you knew what you're doing. Nobody's going to know the sure. difference half the time. That's that's not the importance of it. So I shouldn't have stopped at that word. I didn't know. Nope. Just it doesn't matter when we're doing it here, but it does. And, and just like, and you still learn, like, because schools of thought change, like, uh, Cyrene is actually Cyrene. You pronounce the E on the end. Now, you Only didn't. You, didn't, didn't, you, didn't to. you didn't used to 30 years ago, 40 say, years ago, you didn't yeah. used to. A C, E on the E is not. Yep. Didn't know that one. But anyway. So we got a lot of mileage out of repentance that leads to life. That's pretty good. So, so there's not a lot of doctrine in here, but the ones that is are actually interesting. Uh, when you start to, when you start to unpack what's behind, and the, and and the reason it is is because I'm reading Acts with an eye to these people used to be Jews not long ago. So let's think about how they're thinking, and that's why we had all that background material at the beginning. It's like this is what the world's like right now. Because um, it's important. I mean, it's got to mean the same thing to them it did then as it does to us now. Mm-hmm. And if we think it means something different to us now, we did it like wrong and we need to stop doing that. Okay, so that was that first section. Uh, any questions about that? All right, and then those who were scattered because of the persecution, remember we talked about uh, that, that that was the persecution under Claudius. Claudius? Claudius, yeah. He even mentions him. Yes, Claudius. Uh, so the, the, they are getting scattered a little bit already. And especially once they, you know, once they killed Stephen, everybody's like, oh, they're killing us. All right. So people are, again, scattering uh, further. So now you got them as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. So uh, Phoenicia is where I don't even have it. It's not even on this map. So Antioch's way up here. That's Ptolemaeus. Oh. Uh, Phine- well, Phoenicia is in Egypt. Oh. Uh, anyway, so they're getting s- the Christianity scattering far and wide. I wonder if that's one of the reasons why the church grows during times of persecution. Because <coughs> they get scattered, right? Possibly. Uh, there were some of the men from Cyprus and Cyrene who were coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, and I may have misspoke once a long time ago and said Hellenists were Greek-speaking Jews. They're not. They're Greeks. Greek-speaking Greeks. They're not Jews. Hmm. Uh, so these are non-Jews. They're like Greek. Greek Greeks. So the Hellenists, uh, and they were getting preached to as well. So more Gentiles, right? And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. There's that word, turned. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. 
They came, saw the grace of God, was glad, exhorted them all to remain faithful with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Um, why they had to put those uh, appellations attached to his name, um, I'm not sure. Uh, but mostly, I think that when you have those titles after your name, it gives you a certain authority, like you are apostling, they were, he was sent, not he, that he's an apostle, he was sent by the apostles. Uh, when you have those appellations attached to your name, it's not, you know, it's not like you're a super Christian, but you're a pastor, right? You know, so he exhorted them to do this. And then a great many people were added to the Lord. And Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, found him, brought him to Anak, and then they stayed there a year and taught. Right? So they're baptizing, they're teaching, they're fulfilling the Great Commission. And in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. So until this time, there's no such word, right? They were just followers of the way. Um, and they called themselves the brothers. Uh, sisters, brothers and sisters. Do super Christians get to wear capes? They should. I think they should. They deserve it. Um, yeah. So this is where they're first called Christians, uh, which does come from Latin. Uh, so, even though we have it, uh, Christoros in Greek, Christanos, Christanos, yeah, in Greek. Um, but it actually comes from the Latin, so it's from the native language of the Romans that the word comes from. Uh, because they're followers of Christ, that's the way that word is derived. Uh, and that's where that word starts. And it didn't catch on for a while, right? Because it's kind of a, it's almost derogatory. It's kind of like calling Lutherans Lutherans. They didn't want to be called Lutherans. It was given them as a term of derision. Like followers of Luther, it was a derogatory term. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, yeah, at some point you have to own it. So and Luther absolutely did not want a church named after him. But now we're stuck with it. Now, in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. Uh, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. Was Claudius later? What years was Claudius? Do you remember, Emily? Is that the 70s? Is that after the 60s, destruction? I thought it was 60s. Okay, okay. It was before the destruction of the temple. So that didn't happen. So it's before the destruction of the temple, but not yet. Right, the temple hasn't been destroyed yet. Okay. All right, which it did come to pass. Uh, so that it, uh, why? No, earlier. You're thinking Nero. That was under Nero. 41 to 54. Six, yeah, 41 to 54 hmm. was Claudius, so that's... Now, oh, that's really close. That's actually now. So this is right now. Okay. All right, my bad. I was, I was thinking that's actually Nero in 66, that uh, famine. So, yeah, so this famine is taking place now, uh, which is why they decide, okay, they're going to help out the guys in Judea. And they all say, okay, everybody pitch in according to how they can, and we're going to help them out. And that's how that gets started, right? So we start seeing... Missionary work already. We see uh, you know, world relief work going on. Uh, all the things you see the church doing today, you see it beginning here. Now about this prophet. There's a note on that too.
All right, I was going to flip over. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of prophet he is. I don't know much about Agabus. Mm. I have a triple D. His name would be in there. Is everybody's name on that? Agabus. Anybody else know anything about Agabus? Told by the Spirit. Yes, no. The Spirit demonstrated power through foretelling of the future. Yeah. I think it's important to disconnect the word prophet from. Agabus foretold by the Spirit. So if he foretold by the Spirit, he told something that was going to come to pass, which is what we think of as prophecy. But a prophet is just a messenger of God's word. So sometimes the prophets told stuff that was going to happen, <coughs> for sure. Most of the time they were doing, this is what's going to happen if you don't change. This is what's going to come about. Um, so in that way, they are telling the future. But the primary purpose of a prophet is to bring a message from God, not necessarily to tell the future. That's the same much. No, it's traditionally just recognized as one of the seventy. Okay, that's nice. Cool. So Luke is possibly one of the seventy also. That's really it. That's the chapter. Pretty much. When it says each set according to his ability, mm -hmm. his ability to give. Oh. There? Okay. All right, so they're either sending money or food or donations right. or maybe even, hey, I've got time to go help or whatever. Okay, it's usually, I, I'm thinking of when they were, but it's, were giving it's, to them. And it's they, famine you know, relief, so. Oh, okay. I have magic beans, though. <laughs> hmm. All right. So now next week we'll have more history with chapter. Because I'm not, I'm not going to start another chapter chapter tonight. Uh, but we're going to do a lot of Paul and Barnabas going on. Herod passes. A lot of part of it's Paul and Barnabas for a while. And then we have the first ecumenical council, Jerusalem 1, first Jerusalem council in chapter 15. So like Vatican II and the Council of Nicaea, the very, very first ecumenical council is the Council of Jerusalem, and that's in 15. Yeah. It was not a big to-do like these other ones were. But, uh, it's funny reading that. I didn't think we'd get that much out of it. So. It's a short chapter, but yeah, there's a little bit to talk about. This is my thing with one of these history periods. If I had done like a formal, like I usually do with all the books written out, I don't think we would have talked about that. Probably not. Because we would have found out like I would have found like historical stuff about people or whatever, and we wouldn't would have just dug into the words. Sometimes the best conversations no, are planned. Oh, yeah. It was very interesting. What does that mean? What does that mean? She wants me for I just I'm not doing it. It's a bad habit. Right? Yes. Right? What? For the boldness for Janelle. Yeah, that's her job. Not your job. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't mind doing it. When, I certainly never would have learned all that about repentance. Yeah. And I'm probably not explaining it completely to its fullness. You know, it's mm -hmm. go, oh, go digging. Yeah. I, think I am sure Luther has. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have. I'm sure Luther's got something to stick. Because fortunately, he was a genius and he was really good at saying these things plainly. I mean, uh, but I just have to find. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the Ouija board. Martin Luther. No, that's no. Right. Satan, evil, devil, demon, bad. <laughs> 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 
You know I need a nap when words just start coming out. <laughs> Even bad. Alright, well, we'll stop there and pick it up next week uh, with the next chat.